Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video is going to look at the value of network analysis and we'll also just recap how to identify the, to the critical path and the total float. Um, <clears throat> so the critical path in this example is the one where all the numbers are the same. This implies there is no float time between the earliest time that this could start and um, the latest time it could finish. In other words, you've got to do these activities where the numbers are the same in order for the project overall not to be delayed. So that's the critical path, in this case, A, B, F, I. To calculate the total float on an activity, <coughs> let's have a look at the total float time on activity E, which is not in the critical path. Um, the earliest uh, that we could start activity E, we look at the earliest start time, it's week 4 in this node here. The latest it could finish is week 17 and it only takes 4 weeks in which to do. So as long, so to, to work out the, the latest possible time that we could start, um, 17 minus 4 equals 13. Okay, so we, we have to start this activity E by week 13 at the latest, but we could start it as early as week 4. So we've got quite a lot of slack time here. If we do 13 minus 4, week 13 when we've got to start the uh, uh, activity, minus 4 when we could possibly start the activity, uh, that gives us our float time. So we've got a, a float potential float time of nine weeks here. There's nine weeks in which we could, um, any time between week four and week 13, we could choose to start activity E. Uh, let's just have a look at another example. Uh, say this one, activity C. Um, the earliest that we could start activity C is uh, week four. The um, latest that we could finish activity C is week 14. So 14 minus 4 is 10. Activity C has to start in week 10, um, but we could start it in week 4. So that gives us uh, six weeks to play with between uh, 10 and four, week, weeks 4 and week 10, when we could potentially start activity C. So that's how we calculate float time. In terms of the um, value of network analysis or critical path analysis, um, there are a number of benefits. It's going to help us to identify all of the stages that need to be completed in order to successfully complete a project. It's going to ensure that we break down the project into its component parts and we carefully think about you know, our strategy, what is uh, the what are the different parts that we need. We're then going to be able to use it to estimate the duration of a project which might be important to a business and their clients. They want to know if we're building a factory when's it going to come on stream. If we're building something for clients when's that going to be available for them to use. It's going to identify activities that are crucial to be completed on time so the project is not delayed. So you, you know you know those activities that you've got to really push on to make sure that they start and they finish at the right time. But it also helps you identify the activities that don't have to be prioritised at first. Um, so we can have a bit of slack, we can reorder our manpower for example uh, from one activity to another um, so we can focus on getting the core activities done, the critical activities um, and we know that we've got some activities that, that we can delay or um, lengthen. It's going to help us meet our deadline, it's going to help us plan our resources, so which workers, materials and equipment will be needed and when. It's no good for cash flow if we've got, you know, um, say we've got the requirement for a load of parts for a machine, um, we don't need them till week 17, well why would we order them in week um, 12 if we, we can have them sitting around. Um, it's much better for our cash flow if we order them at the last possible minute and Critical Path can help us understand when that is. Um, critical path, we go back here if problems do arise, we have a look at our plan and we reschedule and I've produced a video on how you can amend a critical path and it allows us to see what will happen if there are potential delays to activities. Um, so all of this is very useful, you know, you'd improve customer service, I mean at least, you know, if the end of a product is going to be completed, if you can tell the client a number of weeks before that happens, 
then that's going to be very beneficial. Um, however, complex projects can be difficult to break down into their component tasks. This is, can be very time consuming to do, particularly for complex projects. It doesn't take unforeseen circumstances into account um, and it's only as accurate as the data that's going to be put into it, which is going to be um, particularly likely to be inaccurate if it's a new project or something you haven't done before. Um, and it's going to be you know, you need to make sure that it's um, constructed with people from all functional areas. So has the operations director constructed the critical path analysis and what does she know about the marketing elements of it and how long that will take? Um, also, in a question, you could look out for potential bias. So, for example, if there's, you know, the shareholders have said this activity needs to be completed in 20 weeks and there's a manager who's particularly keen on the project, you know, if they produce a CPA saying it's going to be a critical path analysis, saying it's going to be ready after week 19, then we could question that. Have they, are they a little bit biased? Do they want to push this project through and therefore have amended the critical path so it looks favourable?